the best free AI video generator just got a long awaited feature, making it, you know, the best bang for your buck when it comes to AI filmmaking. So today let's check it out in action, see what it's good at, where it's kind of lacking. Plus I do have some prompt tips that will definitely save you some time. Okay, let's dive in. So I am of course talking about Minimax, the free for now at least AI video generator that I think I've covered lately on the channel more than I've covered any other platform. Minimax has been doing a great job with text to video, but they have now implemented in image to video, which is, you know, the thing that we've all been waiting for. Now, I will admit that like I'm shooting this on launch day, so generations are taking, you know, they're taking a bit. So just keep that in the back of your mind. That said, all my generations have gone through. So this isn't like a Pika situation where, you know, two days later and the wheel is still spinning. So no real tricks or anything in terms of the UI for generating. You just simply, you know, drag an image in. Uh, you can either choose to write or prompt or, you know, leave it blank and then uh, hit the generate button over here once that stops spinning because I have a generation going right now. I'll say I have found in general, it is better to issue a prompt than just to leave things blank. When you leave things blank, things to tend to stay a little bit on the idle side, which makes sense because you didn't give it any direction. Uh, and then they also have added in a prompt enhancer over here that you can turn on or off. So we'll take this shot, which I generated up in our look at Flux 1.1 last week and run it through Minimax image to video and see what we get. And yeah, overall, not bad. Generations are coming in at 1264 by 720, uh, oddly at 25 frames a second, and they're about six seconds long, which is, you know, one second longer than our previous like five second limit. Taking a closer look, there is a little bit of eye wonk as he turns his head here. But again, going back to the fact that, you know, the initial frame does not actually have information about that side of his face. I mean, it's still pretty impressive. There is an issue here with like a car driving backwards, but to Minimax's credit, that was actually in the initial image as a lot of you pointed out when we first looked at this image in the Flux 1.1 video. So uh, presumably if this is New York, it's probably a driver from New Jersey. Rounding out with two kind of like little things that sort of impressed me, you know, obviously in our initial image, we have that like shallow depth of field kind of bouquet to background. Uh, and it's weird because Minimax actually kind of almost struggles in a weird sort of way with these trees here, trying to keep them in that shallow depth of field, but actually kind of loses it. But it actually ends up creating like this weird like tilt shift effect that actually I think is kind of neat. The other impressive thing is that as the camera kind of continues to move backwards, uh, we get two new characters that enter the scene and, you know, they, they don't look out of place. They actually look completely appropriate to the context of the scene. One thing that I found really impressive was Minimax's ability to hold a consistent style. That's something that they do call out. One thing I think you might have run into if you're trying to work with images like this, kind of a, you know, magical, whimsical Pixar type character, is that generally image to video models will either start to skew them into a much more cartoony style or it'll start to trend towards realism. For example, when we take this image and run it through Gen 3, uh, we end up with this. And this is just like a, you know, one off. Uh, yeah, there's that weird cut there. Um, I'm not dogging on it or anything. I'm just uh, illustrating the point here. Uh, you can see like Gen 3 just kind of loses track of the stylization of the eye. And uh, it was the white part of the eye, the sclera, I think that's called. Um, you know, just kind of, it just sort of has a skin texture because it, it thinks that's where the eyeball should be. Uh, additionally, as the generation kind of continues on, I think our character essentially sort of begins to morph into more of a baby character. And speaking of that drift towards realism, uh, you can see here, you know, obviously this very, you know, stylized image, but as we run it through Gen 3, uh, it turns into, well, the worst audition to work at Benihana ever. But by the end of it, um, you know, we have trended into completely photorealistic territory. Whereas in Minimax, if we return back to our core line, but happy character, um, you can see that it's definitely holding a lot more of the character consistency here. There is a little bit of like warp and morph on her face when she quickly turns, but I, you know, I'm actually willing to forgive that almost as a stylistic choice. In terms of Katana Girl, I, I did end up having to use a different image, mostly because I kept running into like this content filter on Runway's Gen 3. Uh, but here she is in Minimax, you know, very obviously similar character, similar stylization. And as you can see here, she definitely is holding 
that stylization is not morphing into an actual person. She is also holding that double-sided katana like a boss, and I believe she is saying, make that joke again, Tim, make it again. Now, is it perfect? Of course it is not. It is still AI video. Uh, for example, taking this image, definitely done in more of a concept, art style of you know Godzilla rampaging through a city and running that through Minimax we end up with this which is it's kind of, it's cool it's a bit of a disaster but it, it's still kind of cool right from the jump we basically lose the Godzilla-ness of it it just kind of turns into you know giant lizard kaiju um, and then as it you know basically stands on this building uh, we kind of end on well kind of a scandalous shot there but the weight of you know not Zilla basically standing on this building uh, highly unrealistic the fact that it actually does pan though is kind of interesting Although again, running that image prompt in Gen 3, and look, I know it seems like I'm picking on Gen 3. I'm really not. Uh, I think Gen 3 is actually great. It's just one of the things that it's not great at is maintaining stylistic consistency, as we can see here where our Godzilla forms another, wow, that's terrifying, another sort of jawline underneath his jaw. And just in general, um, the whole thing is kind of a bit of a mess. And just taking it for another quick run in Minimax, because, well, I love Godzilla, um, you know, we end up with something that's kind of cool. It, al it almost works, um, except for the fact that, uh, you know, Godzilla's eyes catch on fire, uh, which actually might be a really cool new superpower that he has. But overall, I think that if you were to crop the shot, like uh, right about here, right before the flames start coming out of his eyeballs, um, you know, you've got like a good like two second shot here that you could probably use for something like this would be pretty good for like a quick cut in a trailer. Speaking of quick and cutty, yes, uh, fight sequences are still kind of a no go in Minimax. This is true across all of the AI video generators. That said, I always still think that there is something kind of cool that you can do with this decoherent movement. Like I very much see uh, like a Keanu Reeves moment of just like, I know morph foo. That said, there is a large percentage of you that always gets mad when I start getting too weird and experimental. So moving back over to stylistic consistency, um, taking this image, which obviously is very stylistic. Um, and then as we run this through Minimax, it, it's pretty interesting actually, uh, not what I would call a great shot, but she does end up holding not only character consistency, but style. I mean, granted, she isn't doing very much. The camera just kind of dollies in on her and then moves past her. And I'll say that there is something a little bit off about our character as we come around, especially as we push in. Like there is definitely a very like two dimensional quality to her. Overall, I don't necessarily think this is a bad shot. I just think that this is something that I cut probably about here. Um, and that's, you know, that's just par for the course when it comes to AI video. Rounding out my examples with a more like, cinematic photographic look. Uh, this is a shot from my long gestating Bruce Lee as the Terminator AI short. Um, yeah, this looks pretty great. Yes, he will be back. And yes, I also promise I won't put any morph foo in this one. Uh, moving on to some community examples. Brent Lynch gives us this scene from, I don't know, like a dystopian dinner party. I mean, who, whatever movie this is, these guys are clearly the bad guys. Uh, I think this illustrates a not only uh, a really good camera move on Minimax's part, but an interesting kind of focal pull as well. We talked about that a little bit in the seaweed video that I did a while back. But if you notice... We start with very sharp focus on our foreground characters, but as the camera begins to make its move, like it's pretty impressive that it actually takes these characters out of focus as it starts bringing these background characters into focus, very much miming, you know, essentially how an actual focus pull would work. Also via Brent and the community feed, uh, we have this like ultra long uh, prompt that you can add into the back of your prompt in the hopes that you kind of end up with something that's a little more coherent and smooth. No need to screenshot this. I will paste this down in the description below and you can add it into the back of your prompts if you like. Alternatively, you can also use my Minimax GPT prompt uh, that is also linked down below completely free. It is working right now. I don't know what the deal is. Every once in a while, I get some community guideline strike from OpenAI, and then I have to hit the, you know, request uh, review button, and then it reappears. So I don't know what the deal is. It is working right now, though. Plasmo gives us this kind of insane output. Uh, this is a photo of their daughter holding a self-portrait, running that through Minimax with no prompt gives us this, uh, which is... 
I don't know. It's it's really kind of funny. I mean, that who says AI doesn't have a sense of humor? Padphone takes these cybernetic warriors out for a spin. I'm guessing this is mid journey. I do tend to see a lot of these types of characters showing up on the mid journey uh, discover page. This first one, uh, I'm not overly impressed with. The sword just kind of freaks out. But the second one, uh, yeah, this one is pretty impressive considering that it sort of maintains the consistency of the armor throughout. Kotashko gives us a uh, scorpion from Mortal Kombat City next to some woman on a train desperately trying to ignore him. I, I don't know why. I just find this really, really, really funny. And Rusty Dusty ZA shows us that, you know, now that we have image to video, you can pull off the first frame, last frame trick with this shot. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a still from Last of Us. It kind of looks very Last of Us-y. You can kind of, there it is. Yeah, you can see where the first frame, last frame took over. But yeah, I mean, it works. Overall, I would definitely say that this puts Minimax at the top of the free AI video generation tier list. And while look, I know that a lot of the stuff that came out of Meta's movie gen paper was really pretty impressive. I mean, the fact is, I, I don't think that we're going to get to play with movie gen anytime soon. What you can play with right now for free is Minimax. So I don't have any inside information in terms of when there will be a paid tier. All I know is that for right now, it's an all you can eat buffet. So get in there while it's good. My last bit of advice on it is to probably try to generate on off hours. I was up very early this morning and my generations were happening very quickly. Obviously, as the day went on, things started to slow down. So brew yourself up some coffee and I will see you over there at the midnight hour. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.